day four of the 2015 AMSA Cape Epic will be remembered for many reasons. Investec Songo specialized Kulhavi and Sauza reaffirming their status as the strongest team in the race by blasting their way to a third consecutive stage win. Team Rhesium specialized power to an emotional win after starting the day 27 minutes off the leaders after a time penalty on stage two. Ariane Kleinans and Annika Langfart wrote their names into epic folklore. They were totally focused on regaining the Sassel leaders' orange jersey. That they did so, so emphatically, speaks volumes for their commitment to one another and their fierce determination to win. It was one of the finest performances in the 12-year history of the race. But long after the elite athletes had eaten, showered and enjoyed a massage, hundreds of middle and back markers were coming to terms with what the Absa Cape Epic is really all about. Overcoming the physical obstacles that test the human spirit beyond measure. Add to that the mental fatigue of two long, hard stages. The first a truly hot day of the race. The cuts, bumps and bruises. It all adds up in the middle of the toughest mountain bike stage race of them all. And then there was the pressure to finish within the maximum allowed time, which, due to the intense heat and tough conditions, was eased by 30 minutes. Much to their relief, an exhausted and emotional Candace Marsh and James Sherman's Team Woolworths Ambassadors made the finish by less than two minutes. This and so many more stories of triumph in the face of adversity is what the Absa Cape Epic is all about. After four days of racing, Investec Songo Specialized have a lead of 7 minutes and 21 seconds over Topi Gergen. The ever-consistent Hamida and Van Hoots, ready to pounce 10 minutes and 52 back. Ready Blend and the new Absa Africa race leaders, less than 12 minutes separates the top four teams. Incredibly, Ariane Kleinans and Annika Langfart are back in the Sassel women's race leaders jerseys with 9 minutes and 18 seconds over Senders Health. Sadly, former champion Sally Bigham out of the race. Christina Coleman couldn't continue due to illness. Vessel and Craft have 8 minutes and 28 seconds over Hasselbacher and Sommer in the mixed. The dimension date of Masters is thrilling. Brenchens and Azevedo have a lead of 1 minute and 39 over Simon Fitzenmaier. Bucher and Zorba dominant in the Grand Masters. Stage 4 of the Absa Cape Epic is a loop around the Breer River Valley. After the Vimpom climb, they might catch a glimpse of the Big Five in the Fairy Glen Private Game Reserve. Then it's a glimpse of the Hex River Valley and back towards Worcester. Riders bracing themselves for three steep climbs and gnarly descents before the finish. A week in a campsite with 1,200 riders could be somewhat frustrating. However, at the Absa Cape Epic, the race logistics are such that the riders' every need is taken care of. And after a dusty, dirty stage on the trails of the Western Cape, they need to clean up properly and an efficient queuing system ensures everyone has a hot shower in the specially designed units. Thanks to Hans Grohe's state-of-the-art shower accessories, a significant amount of water is saved as well. Oakley is the official eyewear of the Absa Cape Epic. The international leader in sports glasses have an interactive stand at the race village where visitors are able to view the very latest trends. They also have a presence at the water points where riders whose gloved hands are often sticky and dirty can hand them over to an Oakley eyewear cleaning technician and have them wiped clean and returned as good as new. Each rider in the category leading teams receives a pair of custom colour coded radar locks on the podium. The red tented race village and a beautiful sunrise over the Hex River and Lungenberg Mountains sets the scene for stage four and the fifth day of the Absa Cape Epic. The start of the race at 7 a.m. That's for the top professionals. The rest of the field begin in batches seated according to overall position. Established in 1855 and named after the Marquis of Worcester, this is the hub of the Western Cape's industry and agriculture in the interior. It's also surrounded by beautiful mountains. Kleinans and Longfart back in their orange zebra jerseys again after a storming ride on stage three. Dimension data master leaders Acevedo and Brenchens, just 1 minute 38 ahead of Fitzsimmons and Sim. Woolcock and Lil took the Absa Africa leaders jerseys after stage three. Contenders in that category stage winners with different partners in 2014 based in Bierkus. Nerves just before the start gun. And they're off in the thick of the action. The GoPro captures the atmosphere in the peloton. It's serious stuff. They leave town on what could be termed as a roughly drawn figure of eight loop, exploring the fertile Breda River Valley. The terrain is harsh, typical of the region, and means it'll be a dusty day out on the course. The previous four days have seen some fierce racing in all categories. 
While there's still four stages to go in the men's, the heads of state have been established. A few dominant teams have emerged. This makes for a quieter start on the flat open roads approaching the first major obstacle of the day, the Vinpom climb at 30 kilometers. Conor Platt, hopes of a fifth win fading over 13 minutes behind Investex Ongo Specialized. Satane's Hexrafeed, De Toyscliffe and Lungeberg Mountains standing tall, presiding over stage five of the Apsa Cape Epic. The district is as old as hunting grounds and cattle runs go in the Western Cape, but new as a settled area. Before 1700, the area was a hunter's paradise, teeming with game and wild birds. Scott Factory Racing active on the front. They've been quiet over the first part of the race. Today they make a move. Philip Bass and Matthijs Bierkes have escaped the lethargic pack. They've flown the coop and it's now all business. If they're aiming to win the stage, they'll have 100 kilometers to ride alone. The Ferry Glen Game Reserve, home to the Big Five. Riders may catch a glimpse of lion, buffalo, elephant, rhino and the shy leopard. Through water point one. They don't even slow down. Their bottle's still full after a fast opening 24 kilometers. The chasing pack will follow suit. On a cool morning, they've taken in very little fluids. They'll have to wait till after the Vim Pum climb for a refuel. For the race leaders not orchestrating a chase, Scott Factory Racing make hay while the sun shines and drive the pace. Mason Bukas are no threat to the overall lead of Investex Songo Specialized at 51 minutes down. A roll call of the chase group, Heineck, Licata, Bishop, Menon, Platt, Kulhavi, Salza, Huber, Hesmeyer, Case, Kompren, Grabi, Lil, Wilcock, Hamida, Van Hoots and Walker. RCM Specialized have already stretched out a five-minute lead in the Sassel women's category. There's carnage in the challenges camps. De Groot of Ascender Self had a bad day on stage three and Coleman of Celeronda Hero was forced to abandon. Germany von Kraft, winner in the mixed in 2008 riding with Nico Fitzenmaier. This year she rides with Slovenian Peter Vessel in the green jerseys. The motivation of the Scott Factory racing men is palpable. They have a lot to gain from this attack. A stage win, the Apsa African jerseys and some time in the limelight on the world's biggest mountain bike stage race. Having an excellent day out, Wellington race Timo Cooper riding with three-time champion Stefan Sam. Urs Huber keeps the tempo on a short rise near Vinpom. Bukas now leads base. The gap is less than a minute and the chases of them in their sights. No stress, Cool Harvey takes a drink. All under control for Investex Songo Specialized. Scott Factory Racing started the day six and a half minutes down on Lil and Wilcock. This move could become a real threat. The main field descends off the Vinpom climb. The loose and rutted trail surfaces that are characteristic of the race keep all riders who tackle it on their toes. As is their race rhythm, Ariane Kleinans leads Annika Langfart on the climb. Vinpom climb issues a warning to the field that stage five is to be respected. Out of sight, out of mind. The chasers can't see the dangling carrot of Scott Factory Racing, dulling the motivation to pursue. They have their ears pinned back. Now's the time for the South Africans. The main field ride a steady tempo, allowing the breakaway team the chance to clock up some time on them. At the river crossing, riders lift their feet. Wet socks and shoes means carrying extra weight. All present and correct in the main field, including Team EIA at the back. Scott Factory Racing, Philip Base leads Matthijs Bierkes. Base rode with multiple cross-country world champion Nino Schurter in 2014, winning two stages. Bierkes rode back up with Gert Haynes and also garnered a win of his own, the prestigious grand finale. These two know what victory tastes like. In direct contrast to the South African pair, the main field seems positively relaxed, taking on board some food. Bukas and Bass pick their way through the tricky trails. A long line of chasers now just under four minutes back. 
The leaders will have to measure their efforts on the steep climb. There's still a long way to go to the finish in Worcester. Steady does it for the group of chasers. USN are still in there, just though. It's all in for Bass and Birkus on the descent. With nothing to lose, they'll take a few risks to keep the pace high and steal a few extra seconds on the more conservative main contenders. Split second decisions on which lines to take. Base South African and African cross country champion. He's a five time finisher at the race, placing best in 2014. Birkus is on his third. If all goes well, he'll join the elite group of three time finishers, Amabu Bersi. Appropriately meaning Pride of Lions. Still no reaction from the main group. Still in high spirits, despite the trail conditions. It's not just the gradients that force him to walk, it's the surface littered with loose fist-sized rocks. Not wasting a second, Base gets back on and drives the pace. Four minutes. Gap is at four minutes. Glistening with sweat and caked in dust. It's a 100% commitment from Scott Factory Racing. Yaroslav Kulhavi, the only rider amongst the best in the world who rides this technical climb. The scene speaks volumes of the prowess of the alpha figure in the group. Nico Bell of RCM always on hand. He and Eric Kleinans ride back up for his best Exongo Specialized, ready to donate a part to keep Kulhavi and Sauza in the game. This is puncture country. Even with today's top of the range tyres featuring the very latest in technology, it takes just one sharp rock or one too many thorns to dash the dreams of a podium position. Scott Factory Racing keep charging. The gap is growing. It's now over five minutes. It's the leg of Yaroslav Kulhavi swinging off his machine. A slow leak has been bugging Investec Songo Specialized for the last few kilometers. On hand to help is Rhysium's Kleinans and Bell, who've stayed close all day. A job well done. Communication is telepathic, each knowing their task. Investex Ongo Specialized issue Rhysium with the necessary equipment to deal with the puncture. The whole operation takes less than 90 seconds. The chase back, equally efficient and simple. Kulhavi goes to the front, applies several hundred watts of power to the pedals, Sauza follows. Scott Factory Racing begin to feel the effect of their considerable efforts. They'll be thankful for the moderate temperatures. Conditions are perfect for an escape such as this. Investex Ongo Specialized is back in the main field, taking five minutes to return. Kulhavi makes it look so easy. Jochen Kers puts his nose to the wind. He and Gesmeyer have been quiet, in contrast to Centurion Voda's excellent showing in the 2014 race. Still no reaction from the team with a lot to lose. Ready Blend looks set to lose their red jerseys. Rhysium Specialized crest the loose steep climb that forced the front runners to walk. In firepower and tactics, these two are untouchable. Now it's just up to fate to decide whether or not they'll be the 2015 champions. Langfart amazed even some of the top masters with their pace setting on the flat sections of the course. Couldn't slide a ruler between the top two teams contesting the Dimension Data Masters. Team Dormer Robert Daniels Fitzenmaier leads Betch.nl Superiors Brenchens. The 1996 Olympic champion won the race in 2005 with Belgian Rob Paulison. The select group of the world's best skirt one of the many reservoirs used to irrigate the parched lands. 
What a moment for young Raw Kruse on the wheels of 2012 Olympic champion Yaroslav Kulhavi. It's a lonely endeavour, the long breakaway. Out in the wilderness, they'll be unaware of how much or how little progress they're making on the chases. A lull in the chase at this point. Will this seal the fate of Ready Blend? The skyscrapers, a series of sharp spikes on the profile, but the diagram leaves no clues as to the state of the trails. It's heavy going for all concerned, not least for the team that's been driving hard alone for several hours. Scott Factory Racing are on a cracker of a ride. The gap is growing. Dare they imagine standing on the top step in Worcester. The pace heats up behind and USN finally cracks. A dedicated supporter has taken the day off to witness the biggest mountain bike stage race in the world. It's a serious effort to the skyscrapers. Topi Gergen put the pressure on, hoping this will force a mistake or even a mechanical from Investec Songo Specialized. The gap opens. Absa Africa leader Jersey Ware is today ready blend, gone tomorrow. Base and Bukas can smell home and hear the crowds on the finish line. Lakata pushes hard, making the yellow jerseys earn every inch. Only the Bulls can follow. Casualties of Topi Gogan's acceleration, Multiband Merida and Mirandal Centurion Voda join up in solidarity. Ready blends Wilcock and Lil keep their efforts consistent. The best tactic possible when under hostile fire. The fine balance between caution and all-out speed here. Base goes into a loose corner, a little too hot. He saves it, but valuable seconds tick by. Life on the edge for a pro mountain biker. The last descent before the run into the finish. A familiar sight. Just Topi Gergen and Investec Songo Specialized left out of the overall GC contenders. Platten Uber had to change a wheel and have lost more time. They're with Mirandol, Centurion, Voto, Multivan, Marita, Chaos. Jochen Case goes down. Guess my flies end over end. It's a hard fall. Even in the heat of the race, a concerned Platt looks on. With 1k to go, Scott Factory Racing celebrates. Not too soon, Philip and Mateus. Investec Songo Specialized Mark Topi Gergen close to the finish line. They've done it! With only each other for company for 100k's, the all South African pair of Philip Bates and Mateus Bierkes take a sensational win on stage four into Worcester. Yaroslav Kulhavi leads Christian Heineck, Alvin Lakata, and Christoph Saza home for second and third. Investec Songo Specialized GC lead unchanged. Yet another show of unstoppable dominance. Resium Specialized crush their rivals. 20 minutes is their lead so far on the road. Back down the tracks, Robin de Kruit and Jenny Stinnerhawk still hold their own. De Kruit rides within herself on the steep ascents that mark stage four. Jenny Dreher Bromford leads Theresa Ralph. Team RBS are making good progress on overall GC. The race for the next two steps on the podium is a close affair. Drea Bomford and Ralph steadily closing the gap to Sus and Pirard. Robin de Groot of Team Ascenders Health together with Jenny Stenaha. Sus and Pirard and Mirandal Wheeler, all these teams minutes apart. The former champion grinds up the skyscraper. Epic rookie Alice Pirard in serious pain. Careful on the descent, taking no risks. Ascenders help know what a second place at the Absent Cape Epic means. Not only in prize money, but in prestige too. Dreyad Bomford nurses her tyres over the sharp rocks. A puncture for the all South African pair. Now it's the tedious routine of repairing it while the race sweeps by. Resium specialised on the descent. Annika Longfart's gone down. She survives the fall, now straightening her bars. No panic, they have plenty of time. Back on the road again, the Swiss-Danish pair breathe a sigh of relief. Jubilant at the finish, they celebrate another successful day at the office.
all smiles again. A solid performance from the Swede and the South African are relieved to send his health, take second place, further cementing second on overall GC. All in all, a good day for South African riders. We went out quite early and I went up to Matthijs and told him I don't know if I'll be able to hold this for, for another three, four hours and uh, we backed off a little bit and then I started feeling well and uh, you know we started working together and the gap just grew from there and uh, yeah we, we, were, we managed to hold the guys off up until, until the finish. I wasn't really looking forward to this stage here because there are lots of uh, sharp rocks, uh, lots of thorns. I knew it from, uh, <coughs> from our time trials we had here, racing with Burry. Uh, he was always putting the pressure on me on that one hour. It was very, very hard with him, so... Uh, <coughs> but still, very good memories uh, of, from back in the days. And uh, then it's, you know, it's nice to, to come back and, and actually defending the jersey again, it's like uh, another set point today. A superb ride by two of South Africa's top mountain bikers, Bass and Bukas, winning their first stage together. The two main GC protagonists are playing a conservative game on the trails. The Bulls have another tough day. Resium Specialized collected their 11th stage win as a team as they put in another powerful ride to win by over 20 minutes. A superb performance by the young cross-country specialists Mariska Strauss and Sherry Vale in sixth. Vessel and Craft are on their third stage in a row in the mixed. Another thrilling dice in the Dimension Data Masters. Dorma Robert Daniel taking it by 12 seconds. And Bucher and Zorba continued their dominance in the Grand Masters. No change at the top of the men's overall leaderboard. Hamida and Van Hoots lost time today. Scott Factory Racing's win puts them in the Absa Africa leader's jersey by just 2 minutes and 5 seconds from Lillian Wilcock. In the Sassel women's race, Kleinhans and Langfader managed to claim back 56 minutes over two stages. They now lead Senach and De Kruert by just under half an hour. In the mix, former leaders Hasselbacher and Sommer only four minutes ahead of Astrid's Esser and Williamson. There's just a minute and 25 seconds between the top two teams in the Dimension Data Masters. And Bucher and Zorba have nearly 49 minutes in hand over Anderson and McLean in the Grand Masters. Stage 5 takes the riders from Worcester to Wellington. Their first challenge is power lines, a steep climb keeping them on the tips of their saddles. The track then veers across the Wolseley Valley and onto the National Monument of Bainscrew Pass. Finally the reward, Melbourne Pass Trails, some of the very best single track in the world.